Welcome to White Lecture Online. The most important aspect of launching spacecraft into space is the amount of energy it takes to do so. The Apollo rockets that were used to send men to the moon, well, they're some of the most powerful rockets ever built, and they required about 7 million pounds of fuel to get to the moon. And the reason why they needed so much fuel is because you had to lift up all that weight, the lander, the orbit around the moon, and three people plus all the supplies and provisions that they needed, their space suits and everything else that they needed to get to the moon. Well, that took a lot of energy. You have to get it up to orbit. From orbit, you have to get it up to the escape speed. And at that point, you have to have enough speed to escape the gravitational force of the Earth and go fast enough to get there in a reasonable amount of time. Now, it took about three days for the spacecraft to go from the Earth to the Moon. And how did they do that? Well, there's three things that you need to take, take into consideration. First of all, you need to get up into the Earth's orbital velocity. In other words, you, get, you have to get up in space and orbit the Earth, which requires a speed of 18,000 miles per hour, which is about 29,000 kilometers per hour to get into low Earth orbit. Well, if you take off from the Earth, in the same direction that the Earth is spinning, from looking from the north, to, the Earth is spinning in a counterclockwise direction. So since the Earth is spinning around this way, if you, if you take off from Earth and you take off in this direction, then you already have that initial speed of the rotation of the Earth. At the equator, that is about 1,670 kilometers per hour, and I should say per hour. And in Florida, where the, uh, where the United States launches most of its rockets, well, that speed there is about 800 miles per hour, which is about 13, 1,300 kilometers per hour. So you have that additional speed already just from launching in the direction of the Earth's spin, and then you only need to gain the additional energy to get it up to 18,000 miles per hour or 29,000 kilometers per hour. After that, you want to wait to the right moment. So let's say you're right here, you're going around the Earth in low Earth orbit, and now you want to get away from the gravitational pull of the Earth. So at this point, you want to go ahead and turn on your, your uh, rocket engines again, burn off some more fuel, and gives you some extra speed. So instead of, an, of a circle orbit, you then go into what we call an elliptical orbit. As long as the speed that you gain in the spacecraft is less than the escape speed, you will go into, into an elliptical orbit like that. And so potentially, if there's a planet right there, you can reach it by doing so. Let's say Mars is over there, so by the time you get there, you will reach Mars, and then if Mars wasn't there, you'd go back down and, and follow this elliptical orbit. If you give it enough initial speed where you exceed the escape speed of the Earth, then you wouldn't have a... Um, an elliptical orbit, you would have a parabolic orbit, but you would never come back to the Earth, you would just keep going away and away. The Earth will be pulling on you, so you'll be slowing down, but you continue to move away and will never come back to the Earth once the velocity equals or exceeds the escape speed of the, of the Earth. So in the same way, you go around the Earth, you want to get to the Moon, so you turn on your afterburners, you turn on your rocket engines, you speed up to about 25,000 miles per hour, which is the escape speed of the Earth, and then the engines turn off. You only do that for a few minutes because you only have so much fuel, and then you float through space, and as you float through space, the Earth is pulling back on you. By the time you get to the point where the gravitational force of the Moon and the Earth are equal to one another, at that point the rocket will have slowed down to about 3,000 miles per hour. After that, of course, the Moon will start pulling on you more strongly, and you start picking speed up again. When you hit the Moon, you're probably going about 5,000 miles per hour at that point. So the same thing happens when you want to go from the Earth to Mars. There's your arrival in Mars. Here's the Sun. And so again, what you want to do is you want to launch off from the Earth in the same direction the Earth spin to gain some energy there. Then you go into the low Earth orbit. At that point, when you're in the right direction, at the right point in the orbit, you want to turn on the rocket engines, gain some additional speed. Now, how much speed do you need? Well, you don't necessarily have to get up to the escape speed of the Earth because you just want to get into that elliptical orbit. The elliptical orbit that will reach its maximum height at this point, and then you fall back down to the Earth. The key here is to launch in the same direction as the Earth's motion around the Sun, because the Earth is moving at about 107,000 kilometers per hour, so you want to use all that velocity, transfer it to your spacecraft, because your spacecraft is going around the Earth, so when you're facing in this direction, you're moving in the same direction as the Earth, you turn on the rocket engines, you pick up some more speed, and you begin to move away slowly from the Earth, somewhat sideways, 
but you have that initial velocity here so that your average velocity around this pad is about 95,000 kilometers per hour. It will slow down, slow down, slow down as you get to the highest point right here, but by the time you get to that point, Mars should be there. You'll be coming together at about the same time, and then potentially you go into orbit around Mars, or you can simply fly by. The early spacecraft that went to Mars were simply fly by. They just wanted to just fly by Mars, take some pictures, and then later on, we were able to go ahead and start orbiting Mars and even landing on the surface. But that took some years to figure out how to do that. So it's all about the least amount of energy required to get there. And the best way to do that is to first use the rotational velocity of the Earth and then use the orbit velocity around the Sun to give it as much energy, transfer as much of the energy as possible to the spacecraft so they only need to burn enough fuel to get away from the Earth and go into that elliptical orbit to get to Mars. And that was the key to making it to Mars.